Here are the top stories for today, July 2nd, 2021. A merrier Christmas ahead. The government is optimistic we can have a better Yuletide season as more and more Filipinos are getting vaccinated. A lawmaker is pushing for the creation of more jobs through Bayanihan 3. Lieutenant General Antonio Parlare Jr. says he remains committed in his fight against the CPP-NPA despite his resignation as NTF LCAP spokesperson. And a coffee farmer in Antique finds opportunity in growing fine-grade beans. Good day, I am William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. A better Christmas ahead. Malacanang is optimistic that we will have a merrier Christmas this year. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said that more and more Filipinos are being vaccinated against COVID-19. Roque assures that the government is working double time to achieve population protection before the end of the year. Yes, uh, confident pa rin po tayo for a uh, better Christmas. We've exceeded the 10 million mark for vaccination. We have managed the COVID cases in Metro Manila plus 8 na naging kuta talaga ng uh, um, uh, COVID-19. There are more areas now under MECQ, but population-wise, ang population naman is not as great as when the numbers were so high or at its peak dito po sa Metro Manila plus 8. No? And we're confident that... Uh, with more supplies of the vaccine coming in, mas maraming mabibigyan ng protection. Travel time from Recto Manila to Antipolo will soon be just 40 minutes. President Rodrigo Duterte led the unveiling of the LRT Line 2 East Extension marker during the inauguration of the newly built LRT Line 2 station in Antipolo City. The extension will have two more LRT 2 stations. These are the Marikina Pasig and Antipolo. It is expected to help reduce traffic congestion along Marcos Highway, especially in Marikina, Pasig, and Antipolo. The opening of the two additional LRT2 stations, one in Marikina and another in Antipolo, will increase the line's daily capacity by 80,000 passengers. The usual three-hour travel from Recto to Manila to Masinag in Antipolo will now be just 40 minutes. Indeed, this project will improve mobility and ensure transportation connectivity, especially in the busy, in the busy part of Metro Manila. Albay Representative Joey Salceda said, true stimulus, job creation, and economic growth in the country is needed. Salceda is adverting to the proposed Bayanihan to arise as one act or Bayanihan 3. Salceda said he is convinced that as vaccination rates further improve, it will be strategic to embark on a true stimulus program. He said the first two Bayanihan packages were not stimulus but were merely rescue packages. As such, he said, the third Bayanihan installment must be paired with an aggressive credit stimulus plan for business recovery and new business development. A number of local governments are gearing up for the upcoming deliveries of different brands of COVID-19 jabs. Meanwhile, Quezon City is still relentless in vaccinating more workers as their Bakuna nights continue. The details from Chris Chris Mundo. About 10,200 government workers in Quezon City have been vaccinated against COVID-19. Among the government agencies served by the QC Protectoda program were the Department of Agrarian Reform, Department of Agriculture, National Housing Authority, Commission on Higher Education, and National Power Corporation. The city government also accommodates private companies wanting protection for their employees and continuously holds its Bakuna nights for workers who cannot go to their vaccination sites during the day. 
Meanwhile, a total of 230,236 COVID-19 vaccines have been administered in Davao City. Dr. Ashley Lopez of the Davao City Health Office says vaccine acceptance among the Bawenios has been increasing since March. In other news, the National Vaccination Operations Center has shipped 20,000 doses of Sinovac vaccine for the province of Negros Oriental. Assistant Provincial Health Officer Dr. Leland Estacion said half of the jabs are allocated for their second dose while the other half will be distributed to the different local government units in the province. Meanwhile, Ormoc City has been chosen as the pilot area for the Eastern Visayas rollout of the Russian-made Sputnik V vaccine. The local government says the city has been chosen for having its cold chain facility and adequate vaccination team. About 2,400 doses of jabs arrived on Thursday, which will be given to 2,400 pre-listed recipients in the A1 to A3 categories. Ormoc City is the only local government in Eastern Visayas that has received both Pfizer and Sputnik V. Other areas in the region have received Sinovac and AstraZeneca vaccines. And in Tarlac City, an ultra-low temperature freezer has been prepared for the initial rollout of the Pfizer vaccine. The city government started administering Pfizer vaccines to its residents on Wednesday, June 30. Almost 3,000 individuals belonging to the A1 to A3 priority groups have received the Pfizer vaccine. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. DOH Epidemiology OIC Director Alethea de Guzman said there is no local transmission of the highly transmissible Delta variant. This amid the report of DOH Davao Regional Director Annabel Yumag that 14 patients have recovered from infection caused by the Alpha and Delta variants of coronavirus. De Guzman maintains that the absence of local cases of Delta, Delta Plus or even Gamma variant in the country could be attributed to the government's stronger border control. Wala tayong locally reported na Delta variant na kaso. Um, I will have to check red baka she may be referring to an ROF na pagkatapos ng isolation ay maaring bumalik sa Davao, no? The government is hiring more than 5,000 workers nationwide as Barangay Health Economic Recovery Officers or HEROES. Their job is to gather information from employees regarding the status of their employment so that the government would know what other forms of assistance they do need. The program is under mission rebooting activities through community engagements and tulong panghanap buhay sa ating disadvantaged or displaced workers or tupad program. Interested applicants must be at least 18 to 30 years old. Once hired, they will be working for three to six months and their salary is based on the daily minimum wage of the area where they are hired. Those who are interested may visit the nearest Dole Regional Field Offices to file their applications. Still to come, Lieutenant General Antonio Parlade Jr. says he remains committed in his fight against the CPP and PA despite his resignation as NTF Alcock spokesperson. And a fresh start for this family who decided to go back to their hometown through the Balik Probinsya program. Details ahead, this is the PNA Newsroom. The COVID-19 pandemic has greatly changed our lives for the worse. Lives and jobs were lost and economies reached a meltdown. Thanks to the arrival of safe and effective vaccines, we are one step closer to normalcy. It's time to do our part, get vaccinated for our safety and for our recovery. If you are there in that community, go there and have yourself vaccinated by any of the vaccines available. They are all potent, they are all uh, effective. I would like to appeal to all our Kababayans, please 
get vaccinated against COVID-19 and be the government partner in preventing further spread of the disease. I encourage you to get vaccinated as soon as possible time. These vaccines are safe and they are the key to reopening our society. The need for international solidarity and cooperation cannot be made clearer than this pandemic because everyone is safe. No one is safe globally until everybody is safe. Vaccines work. Malacanang confirmed that the President already accepted the resignation of Lt. Gen. Antonio Parlade Jr. as spokesperson of the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict or NTF LCAC. The details from Late Kabagani. Less than a month to retirement, Southern Luzon Command Chief Lt. Gen. Antonio Parlade Jr. resigned as one of the spokespersons of the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict or NTF LCAC. He said he wants to ease the pressure on the NTF LCAC principals who are being questioned for designating him in the position. The outgoing Solcom chief said he will continue to defend the country against the CPP NPA and its allied organizations in whatever legal way he can. Meanwhile, Senator Panfilo Laxon Tink and commended Parlade for his commitment to end the decades-long problem of insurgency. Laxon said he still believes that the NTF LCAC is a long overdue solution to the water lily tactical maneuvers being employed by the CPP and PA to maintain their influence over previously cleared barangays. A huge portion of the NTF LCAC's budget goes to the development of barangays cleared of insurgencies. Parlade is scheduled to retire on July 26 after reaching the mandatory retirement age of 56. He will be replaced by 2nd Infantry Division Commander Major General Bartolome Bacaro. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Lid Kabagani. To give more Isabelinos land tenure, the Department of Agrarian Reform distributed 670 Certificates of Land Ownership Award or CLOAS to farmer beneficiaries in Isabela Province on Thursday. Agrarian Reform Secretary John Castrichones said the CLOAS covers over 840 hectares of farms. <clears throat> Among the beneficiaries were seven former rebels who received about 15.43 hectares of farmland. Also distributed were 43 units of brand new motorcycles with sidecars, two units of multi-purpose vans, and a farm tractor to farmers' organizations. Castrachones also led the groundbreaking and memorandum signing for 150 houses in the Balay Farmers Housing Project in Villa Paz Village, among other activities. Earlier, Dar also distributed cloas to beneficiaries in Casibu Nueva Vizcaya, Furagi Solana Cagayan, Padul Solana Cagayan, and Bagao Cagayan. A fresh start ahead for this family who benefits from the Balik Provincia program of the government as they decided to go back to their hometown in Ormoc City. The details from Marita Mawahe. Wearing a blue couple shirt printed with Mama Bear and Papa Bear, the Ritoya couple caught the Philippine News Agency crew's attention while looking for a Balik Provincia beneficiary that we can interview among the crowd. While most of the beneficiaries are silently waiting for the process to be done so they can finally go back home to their province, Felix and Tess Retoya are seriously but happily talking while they tend to their kids. The husband and wife have been blessed with five cubs or baby bears. Like most couple, the coronavirus disease or COVID-19 pandemic had a bad toll on the family. With Felix forced to resign from work and the family needs to pay the rent and feed their children, life became so difficult. Sobrang hirap kasi na wala ng trabaho yung asawa ko. Tapos nangungupahan kami. Hirap pati sa pagkain. 
Felix used to earn enough for his family with this work as a welder in a construction company. Nagawa kami sa araw. Kaya malaki ang kinikita ko. Mas malaki ang kinikita ko sa gabi. Kasi lalo na pag finish kalas, imbis na apat na oras lang yung natrabawin ko, babayaran ako ng ano, apat na araw. Ganun. Mas malaki. Oo, oh, maayos pa. Oh, hindi pa namin naisip na kailangan ng bumalik ng COVID siya. Not until the COVID-19 pandemic came and the lockdowns were imposed. This affected much of Felix's work. Sobrang hirap na po ma'am. Kasi dahil, uh, hindi lang well, pati overtime, wala nang overtime. Tapos yung dating buo-buo yung sahod na tuwing linggo ibibigay nila. Nagawa ng kalahati. Kalahati na lang ang may bibigay. Two, two gifts na yung ano. Yung pasahod nila sa amin, tapos wala pang overtime. Kaya umalis na lang ako, nagsorbitero na lang ako. The new job as an ice cream man was also okay, said Felix, especially during summer. But when it rains, the day ends with the ice cream still intact, without any sales. Then they heard of the Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa Program. Uh, Pinarsigo si Mrs. na... The couple said that they decided to apply most especially for the sake of their children. Ano, mahirap kasi makikita mo sila na may gustong kainin, tas minsan kulang yung pagkain. Sobrang sakit, sobrang sakit na makita sa magulang na makita sa mga anak na gano'n ang sitwasyon. Tess recounted that whenever one of the children is sick, she would ask for medicines from the health center as they do not have money to buy them. In school, there are days that the children are not able to attend their online class because they do not have the budget to buy them data load. Because their children saw all of this, a test said that it was not hard for them to convince them about going home to the province. The eldest, Felmar, 14 years old, had some hesitations at first. Felmar said that this is because he grew up here in the city. But the thought of seeing his Lola made him change his mind. Plus the fact that he saw the difficulties being experienced by the family. Wala kami ng pagkain. Wala na kami ng pera na. Tapos, mahirap na yung trabaho ni Papa. Ano lang po, naglilinis lang po. Tapos, inalagay ang kapatid. Felmar said that he wants to be an engineer someday and as soon as he finishes college, he said that he will go back to Manila to work here. Despite the difficulties, the family is looking forward to going back to Ormoc and starting a new life in the province. Tess said that she is positive since there will be government support. She said that they will undergo training on agribusiness. Tess' family in Ormoc is already excited. <laughs> The couple said that they believe that no challenge is difficult if there is love and understanding within the family. The couple has been married for 15 years. Kailangan open ka lang sa open sa isa't isa, tapos haba ang pasensya. <laughs> Mahabang mahaba na. <laughs> Importante mo lang muna, respeto sa isa't isa. The couple is thankful for the Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa program of the government as this will give them a new shot and have a fresh start. They said that without the program, they will never be able to shoulder the travel expenses and that they will just be stuck here in the city without any chance to better the lives of their children. Maraming maraming salamat sa dumating itong programang Balik Provincia dahil dito malaking tulong malaking tulong na makakauwi kami sa probinsya. Maraming maraming salamat. This is Marita Muahe for the PNA Newsroom. The Philippine Statistics Authority has started the mobile registration for the Sphilsis Step 2 mobile registration for teachers and personnel of the Department of Education in Dagupan City, Pangasinan. 
the 39 public schools of the city, including some private school teachers and personnel, were clustered into five for the three-day registration schedule from June 30 to July 2nd. Meanwhile, simultaneous with the Dep Ed personnel of the Gupan, PSA also holds PhilSys Step 2 registration for the Department of Environment and Natural Resources Office in Urdaneta City and in Land Bank Urdaneta City. The PhilSys registration is open to Filipinos aged 15 to 65 years old. Step 1 is the collection of demographic data, while Step 2 is the data capturing or biometrics which involves fingerprints and iris scan. Step 3 is the delivery of the national ID at the residence of the registrants by the Philippine Postal Corporation. And moving on to business, the country logged its second lowest unemployment rate in May 2021 amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The Philippine Statistics Authority reported Thursday that the unemployment rate in May 2021 was at 7.7%, easing from 8.7% in April 2021 and slightly above the lowest unemployment rate in March 2021 at 7.1%. National Statistician and Civil Registrar General Dennis Mapa said this is due to lesser restrictions in the NCR Plus bubble in May as compared to April. In May, 410,000 jobs were added to the labor market since the enhanced community quarantine was lifted. Labor force participation also increased in the NCR, Central Luzon and the Cablabarazon which are part of the NCR Plus. MAPA said community quarantine restrictions would continue to pose risks in the labor market. He said the underemployment rate in May at 12.3% is closer to pre-pandemic level. Up next, a coffee farmer in Antica finds opportunity in growing fine-grade beans. And the Department of Agriculture offers good income for displaced workers. Back after a quick break, stay with the PNA Newsroom. A promising profit awaits Antiqueño growers after their Robusta coffee product earned the highest classification as fine grade in the 2021 Philippine Coffee Quality Competition. The fine grade is in the highest in terms of coffee classification, meaning the coffee beans are of good quality with zero defects. Alejandro Gonzaga, president of the Calo Oy Tula Tula Sikap organization, said their coffee is organic and all-natural as they don't use fertilizers. He said that during harvest time, they tediously sort the beans to remove those that have spots due to infestation. With the fine-grade classification, their products will command a higher price in the market and will have more potential clients. 
Aside from the coffee beans, they also produce processed coffee using the shared service facility equipment given by the Department of Trade and Industry or DTI. The Association of Coffee Growers, with its 300 members, covers 400 hectares in barangays Kaluoy, Tula Tula and Bulalacao in Cibalo. Agriculture Secretary William Dar has encouraged residents in the Cordillera region, particularly those displaced by the COVID-19 pandemic, to take up farming as a source of income. During the kickoff program for the month-long celebration of the 34th Cordillera Day, Dar said Cordillera has proper conditions that make it an important producer of rice, vegetables, sugarcane, coffee, and other upland crops. Dar, who is also the Cordillera's Cabinet Officer for Regional Development and Security, added that the high-value crops that may be raised in the region may open opportunities for export. For his part, DA Car Director Cameron Odse said farming would still be sustainable even under the highest community quarantine classification. He said the DA has programs, projects, and assistance that they carry out with local government units to help the public. The Cordillera Administrative Region, or CAR, was created under Executive Order 220 by former President Corazon Aquino on July 15, 1997 to prepare it to become an autonomous region. The Department of Tourism praised the tourism stakeholders of Davao City for spearheading an innovative vaccination program for travel and hospitality employees, including a four priority group members. The program, Davis Bakuna by the Sea, was held at the Waterfront Insular Hotel Pavilion from June 30 to July 2. Tourism Secretary Berna Romulo Puyat thanked Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte for including tourism industry workers on the city's vaccination priority list. She likewise thanked the private sector for their contribution in organizing the program, saying it would further spur the recovery of Davao's tourism. The program allocated 14,000 doses of Sinovac vaccines for the initial 7,000 tourism workers to receive the life-saving shots. As of June 24, 7,015 tourism workers from seven regions in the country have already been inoculated against the disease. And in our news overseas, Western Canada is sweltering under record high temperatures that may have killed scores of people in Vancouver. In the province of British Columbia, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or RCMP, issued a plea for people to check on loved ones and neighbors as the heat wave continues in Metro Vancouver. Since Monday, the RCMP has responded to 25 sudden death calls believed to be caused by severe heat in the town of Burnham. Police in Vancouver said they have responded to at least 63 sudden death calls since the heat wave began Saturday. Weather Department Environment Canada said British Columbia, the province of Alberta, and the Yukon and Northwest Territories are under a heat dome that is creating unprecedented weather. In the village of Lytton, northeast of Vancouver, the mercury hit 47.9 degrees Celsius, the hottest temperature ever recorded in Canada. To honor social workers and recognize their roles in nation building, President Rodrigo Duterte has signed Proclamation Number 1176, declaring June 19 of every year as Filipino Social Workers Day. Duterte directed the Department of Social Welfare and Development to lead, coordinate, and supervise the nationwide observance of the Filipino Social Workers Day. The proclamation also emphasized the need to spread awareness about the qualities that make a social worker and their significant role in the reduction of the socioeconomic vulnerabilities of Filipinos. Republic Act No. 4373 was enacted on June 19, 1965 to regulate the practice and operation of social work. Section 9, Article 2 of the Constitution mandates the state to promote a just and dynamic social order that will ensure the prosperity and independence of the nation and free the people from poverty through policies that will provide adequate social services.
Here's another look at today's biggest stories. A merrier Christmas ahead, the government is optimistic we can have a better Yuletide season as more and more Filipinos are getting vaccinated. A lawmaker is pushing for the creation of more jobs through Bayanihan 3. Lieutenant General Antonio Parlare Jr. says he remains committed in his fight against the CPP-NPA despite his resignation as ntf cop spokesperson. And a coffee farmer in Antique finds opportunity in growing fine-grade beans. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, wear your face masks and face shields, wash your hands often, practice safe physical distancing, go out only for essential reasons, and get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, visit our webpage or head onto the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day, stay safe, and happy weekend, everyone.